to do practice with components number two, which is on the bottom right now. Okay, so if you don't have out a piece of paper, get this out. You're going to need your calculator, so please take out your calculator. Yes, that one. Okay, for number two. It asks, what are the x and y components of the following vector where v equals 38 meters per second, 65 degrees? So it gives you this idea that this object is launched at 38 meters per second and it's launched at an angle of 65 degrees. So we really can't do anything in terms of finding how far that projectile goes, how long it's going to be in the air, unless we know the motion in the x and the y plane. So we have to find the motions in the x and the y plane. So we have to find the components of motion in the x and y plane. So we're going to find the y component of motion and we're going to find the x component of motion. So we're finding the velocity component of motion in the y plane and we're finding the velocity component of motion in the x plane. Okay. First one we're going to start with is the x plane. We're going to find the component of motion for velocity in the x plane. In the velocity of the x, I'm going to redraw this triangle just looking at what I know. I know that this is 38, and this is what I want to find right here. Well, knowing what I know about triangles, I know that this is the adjacent, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse of my triangle. If that's the case, I know that if I do sine of the angle is equal to opposite, or sorry, it should be adjacent all over hypotenuse. Is it sine adjacent or hypotenuse? No, it's cosine adjacent or hypotenuse. Sorry. Cosine theta adjacent all over hypotenuse. Let me just check that. I'm dealing with hypotenuse. I want the adjacent side. So yes, I'm going to do cosine. Cosine of theta, or cosine of the angle, is equal to my adjacent side all over my hypotenuse side. Good. So now I'm going to add in my more specific information. So if I take cosine of the angle, which is 65 degrees, and do the adjacent side, which is velocity in the x, all over the hypotenuse, which is the speed at which it's traveling, which is 38 meters per second, I can find my velocity in the x. As we just discussed a moment ago, you do it in parentheses first, and then multiply what's outside. What's my velocity in the x? 16.1. Good. Can I get a second on that? Who else did it? Yeah, I got a second. Okay, good. So this is 16.1. And units for velocity are meters per second. Okay, 65 is my angle, so I'm going to take cosine of the angle. 38 is on the bottom, I want Vx by itself, so I have to multiply by 38 on one side, and what I do to one side, I must do to the other side in order to get velocity in the x by itself. The next thing I'm going to
going to do is I'm going to find the component of motion in the y plane. So again, I'm going to draw my triangle. I'm going to say it's leaving at 38 meters per second. The angle is 65 degrees. I'm going to label each side again. By labeling each side, it just helps me get a frame of reference of this is my hypotenuse, this is my opposite, this is the adjacent side. This is a little confusing for some people. Yeah, isn't it? Same thing. No. Mm -mm, it's in the y now, not in the x. We're in the y plane. Can and so what's a little confusing the sign is that this is my y component of motion. And here is the piece that I'm concerned about. I want to use this hypotenuse because that's the number they give me. Whatever length this is, is going to be this length. So I'm going to pretend that this is the side I'm actually looking for, my imaginary dy. Because these two guys would be the same length. Yeah. Couldn't you say you say so and so? Hmm? Couldn't you say you say so and so? You could, as long as if you found this and it was correct, you could use tangent. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to stick with what they give me so that I can always get it regardless of what I have or don't have. If they give me the launch velocity, I can always find it. And so then I'm going to do sine. I'm going to do sine of the angle they give me is equal to opposite all over um, hypotenuse. So then again, I'm going to take sine of 65 is equal to the opposite, which is my velocity in the y, all over the launch speed of 38 meters per second. I want y by itself, so I'm going to multiply by 38. And what you do to one side, you have to do the other. So vy equals, can you come up with it? 34.44. 34.4. Let's call it 34. So now I know that this object being launched, it has a speed going upward of 34. And I'm going to make it go up. It has an x component of motion of 16. And let me see what else I know about this guy. So if this is the object going through the air, right? And we know that this velocity in the y is 34. What's this velocity? His landing speed. What's his final speed? Negative 34. Negative 34. Good. What's his velocity in the y at the peak? Or at the highest point? And then we know that the x component of motion is not changing. So this is always going to be 16. Now, my next question is, we know there's no air resistance, right? No air resistance? So if it takes off with a speed of 38 right here, what is its landing speed? What's the landing speed right here? Frank? 38. Don't have to have negative. You get, there is no zero. It's 38 at an angle of 65 degrees. So what it takes off at, it lands at. How easy is that? And the reason why the launch speed of 38 is the same as its landing speed of 38 is because there's no air. OK? This triangle over here is the exact same triangle over here, just flipped. All right? Good? Good. Shift.